The second dynamic of the commons economy is more properly what we see as Wikipedia and Linux, which is people aggregating themselves to create common projects. You can write an article in Wikipedia on your own, because if somebody changes it, you have to engage with them. Yeah? And therefore, that creates strong links within those communities, and most of those communities have their own infrastructure. And there also we have this mix. We have the community, which is self-governing. We have usually non-profit foundations, which, create, which manage the scarce resources that are needed to enable and empower that process. Uh, Wikimedia Foundation, Mozilla Foundation, Apache Foundation, etc. And around that, we have a field of scarcity, which is, consists of businesses making a living through the value created out of the commons. For example, companies working with Linux, they can't really sell Linux because actually you, you know, can just download it on the internet if you want. But they will install it, they will integrate it in your other systems, they will train your staff. This is a scarcity and this is what they can market. And in turn they will then feed the commons out of which they create the value. So the value is kind of created in the commons but it's captured through a sharing or a commons business model. Yeah, that's the kind of dynamic that is at play. So, to conclude the example, we now have something quite fundamentally happening. Three social processes. First, what I call peer production, the ability to produce in common. Second, peer governance, the need and ability to manage those projects. And third, the need to protect and sustain this new social system through a new, through new legal and institutional ways. This is what I call peer property. Yeah? So we have peer production, governance and property. And on a macro level, uh, this is really interesting, but uh, let me first kind of uh, give some details about peer production. It's really important to understand what a radical change this means, you know, in, in terms of how we used to do things. Um, so the first, ex the first uh, notion that I use is called equipotentiality. So let's assume you have a for-profit company or another institution. You judge people on the whole as, a, as an entity. You put them in the division of labor, which is pre-established. Um, and that's not how it happens in peer projects. What you do in peer projects is you slice up the tasks in very modular elements and you let people self-select the task they want to undertake. Yeah? Nobody's telling a programmer, uh, well some do actually, because half get paid in, in Linux, but actually even the majority of those get paid are no longer working in an actually command and control uh, environment. So what you do is, or in, let's take Wikipedia, which is more clear, you create you know, all these slices or articles that have to be written. People self-select themselves. Um, and so the idea is that since we're always already connected, since we're always learning through our networks on a permanent way, in a permanent way, nobody can predict what kind of exact mix of skills you have for any particular task. Only you know by yourself that, yes, I can do this. Okay, and so you, you create a system which allows this matching to happen. Now, of course, I can say I'm a super programmer, maybe I'm not. So what you then do is you match the distributed production with distributed control. And this is called communal validation. So the big shift is that all the selection mechanism move from the front to the back. Yeah? So I'm an editor-in-chief. I decide what comes into my magazine. I pre-select the, the articles. I change them a little bit. And then I publish them. In a peer-produced newspaper like All My News or a system like a Dig, everybody can produce the articles. And then there are collective choice systems with rate and select and rank them. And hopefully this, you know, the quality is selected and comes out. So that's the idea. So it's always a posteriori rather than a priori. Okay? Um, Anti-credentialism means you will no longer ask for credentials. That's a really big change. Yeah? So nobody's asking, do you have a degree as a programmer? You either can program or not, and we'll see. But just go ahead and we'll see what you can do. Um, 
And uh, also the notion of holoptimism is important, which is the basic